I mix what I like, what I like, what I like. All right, what's up, world? Welcome again to another edition of I Mix What I Like, imixwhatilike.org, at I Mix What I Like for all your relevant social media. Again, I'm Jared Ball, happy to be your host. And once again, we're joined by Daruba Ben Wahad, formerly of the Black Panther Party, the Black Liberation Army, one of our foremost uh, analysts, philosophers, and organizers. He's been with us many times, and we want to invite you off the top to go back to imixwhatilike.org and see all of our previous and hear all of our previous interviews and conversations. Uh, but first, welcome Daruba back to the show. Let me, let me first welcome you back and thank you again for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you always uh, taking the time. Oh, thank you, Jack. Thank you. So we, we wanted specifically at the request of, 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 of several in, in the audience here, uh, and we appreciate that they always want you back, uh, to respond to this latest report that came out, published in Foreign Policy magazine uh, in August, uh, an FBI report claiming, as they say here in their executive summary, that, there is an, that the FBI assesses it is very likely that Black identity extremists, or BIE, perceptions of police, police brutality against African Americans spurned an increase in premeditated retaliatory lethal violence against law enforcement and will very likely serve as justification for such violence. Um, they go back and assess that, that it is uh, very likely that this increase followed the August 9th, 2014 shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and the subsequent grand jury of November 2014 declination to indict the police officers involved. And they, they uh, call for an enhanced concern around, again, these BIEs or Black Identity Extremists. Uh, and some have noted that this is a COINTEL Pro or counter Counterintelligence Program 2.0. So I first wanted to get your response to this initial uh, report or the publication of this report uh, and what you think it might mean that something is being called in 2017 uh, uh, COINTEL Pro 2.0. Well, well uh, <clears throat> first of all, I mean, I, I know the, the date on this is, I, I believe, um, in August, right? August 7th, 19th. Yeah. 2017. Yep. And, and so this BIE desk or whatever has, has not, you know, it, it, it didn't happen overnight. Um, if anybody knows anything about the government, they know that, uh, that these things don't happen uh, overnight. Uh, I think that um, the BIE um, was, was, uh, was in the making for some time. They just didn't. They just hadn't probably identified the funding for it and gave it a name and assigned uh, particular individuals. But we do know that a lot of individuals, uh, uh, police officers who were formerly in the Joint Anti-Terrorist Task Force and who were uh, FBI uh, agents and FBI uh, folks uh, in the 60s and 70s, had been brought out of retirement uh, to to to. Uh, to provide expertise on so-called black militants, on uh, so-called nationalists and violent prone uh, um, uh, black folks. I mean, it's interesting to note that they claim that these, uh, this BIE uh, um, uh, segment of, of the black population are the ones most likely to, to, to target law enforcement when we know in fact that the right wing the right has actually killed cops and targeted uh, law enforcement on a number of occasions. And previous reports, even recent reports, have suggested that it is white supremacist groups that the government has assessed to be the greatest domestic terrorist threat uh, in the United States, not so-called Arab or Muslim terrorists or uh, this new BIE designated group. Uh, uh, which, as they reference in their own document here, has only what, what could be attributed, uh, as they in their own document have two or three incidents that could be uh, 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 attributed to, to the, what they call the BIE influence, they, uh, notably uh, Gavin Eugene Long in, in Baton Rouge uh, uh, recently, and Micah Johnson, uh, uh, and uh, one or two other minor incidents uh, where, where uh, allegedly BIE quote, influenced uh, uh, actors acted violently against uh, law enforcement, but nothing that, that, that compares to the numbers that we see associated with, with as they said themselves, white nationalist terrorist groups. 
Oh, that's true. But it, if you notice in the executive summary of this document, they they specifically talk about Morris sovereign citizen ideology. Right. Now, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> whatever that's supposed to mean in their minds, I know that we know that the so-called Morris science temples and 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 all of these things uh, were the uh, precursor to the Nation of Islam were um, a precursor to a lot of the ideologies that flowed out of out of that period um, in the post Garvey period when um, when 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 some of these so-called Moorish um, uh, uh, formations uh, e um, evolved and but they don't mention um, the NOI uh, they don't mention uh, the ideologies that that we would think that they would talk about in relationship to this, namely uh, so-called black nationalist hate groups, which was the term that was used in COINTELPRO. They, they avoid using the term nationalist and they avoid using the term African. They, they instead focus on, um, on, um, on these posturing organizations, individuals that have good marketing skills and can get on the internet and, and talk smack about um, about white folks and and talk about um, how how militant they are and and how superior black people are. You notice that they use the term black superiority. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting you pointed out this way because in their section of the report uh, de uh, de described under or, or or labeled perspective, they they say that BIEs have historically justified and per perpetuated or and perpetrated violence against law enforcement, which they perceived as representative of the institutionalized oppression of African Americans, but had not targeted law enforcement with premeditated violence for nearly two decades leading up to the lethal incidents observed beginning in 2014. BIE violence peaked in the 1960s and 1970s in response to, the, to changing socioeconomic attitudes and treatment of blacks during the civil rights movement. BIE groups such as the Black Liberation Army, BLA, which was created in the early 1970s to take up, to quote, take up arms for the liberation and self-determination of black people in the United States, end quote, engaged in murders, bank robberies, kidnapping, rap racketeering, possession of explosive and weapons smuggling. And finally, from 1970 to 1984, the BLA was involved in at least 38 criminal incidents, including 26, 26 armed assaults, three assassinations, four bombings and four hijackings and hostage takings. Almost half of these attacks took place in predominantly African-American neighborhoods and target law, targeted law enforcement officers without regard to their race, according to an open source database, end quote. So I think it's interesting that they make reference to the BLA, but specifically to none of the politics associated with that organization or with the political prisoners such as yourself who were created in response to that or, or as part of that uh, 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 um, counter uh, uh, counterintelligence effort uh, uh, led by the state, um, and then they reconnected back in the very next paragraph to this to the to the Moorish separatists, which uh, have a decidedly different politics in relationship to this history and uh, relationship to the community and and uh, revolutionary political activity. So I, I just found that very interesting. Uh, uh, and to, just to supplement the point you were making, that they don't want to reference uh, variations of nationalism, socialism, pan-Africanism, uh, uh, philosophies of armed struggle and self-defense, etc. They just want to connect it to the sort of messianic, pop, popular uh, um, well, this, that you were talking about. Uh, exactly. And this is what I, what I said a couple of years ago about the encapsulation of these movements. Um, of, of the prime example, of course, was the New Black Panther Party. And, and how it evolved, and how it evolved um, um, out of the nation of Islam uh, with, um, with Khalid Muhammad taking over an organization that was started in Texas uh, by, by, uh, by, 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 by young men in Texas. Um, and, and, and the whole encapsulation process was to do this, was to hijack the radical history and the politics that, that, that flowed out of the liberation movements of the 60s. Now, we're talking about liberation movements of the 60s that swept the world. We're not just talking about uh, black people here in the United States. We're talking about the, the number of nations that became independent in Africa, uh, many of whom uh, uh, had, 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 had developed armed struggle as a means towards that independence. 
um, we, 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 we're talking about um, um, uh, the IRA that, that in, in, in the UK, in, in, in Europe, that has waged um, decades of armed struggle against British uh, occupation and, and British domination. We're talking about the, uh, the struggles in, in the Philippines, in, well, across the world, armed struggle was seen as a viable alternative, as a viable strategy and a viable technique to the empowerment of people who had no self-determination. Uh, we're talking about the Puerto Rican liberation movement. Um, uh, it was that movement, the, uh, the Puerto Rican nationalist movement that showed and illustrated uh, through violence and nonviolence, through political and um, organizational methods that Puerto Rico was a colony. And I think today with, with Trump's treatment of Puerto Rico and the hurricane uh, victims uh, 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 there, that, that the Puerto Ricans sadly uh, 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 regret that they did not uh, vote in the re that referendum that occurred a, a decade or so ago for independence. They were always being treated as second class citizens. They were always being treated as a colony. And this has all come to, of course, to the fore now with the way they are treated, the distinction between how Texas hurricane victims were treated and how Puerto Rican uh, 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 hurricane victims are, are treated. And I said that to say that the period from the, from the so-called dormancy of the BLA, roughly 19, 1979, 1978, up until um, uh, uh, the auspices of, of a lot of these, um, what I call the hoteppers, uh, the Hotep movement, you know, um, the, those individuals who who who, who constantly uh, um, um, talk about how great we were as a civilization five thousand years ago, who revert to certain types of ideological and cultural um, uh, affectations that are very specious, that have nothing to do with organizing African people for power, but in but appealing to their emotions. Uh, are playing off of white supremacy, but they don't really deal with the structure of white supremacy and class. They don't understand or fail to understand that, that, that white supremacy is a construct of capitalism. And it's, it's, it, without capitalism, of course, white supremacy wouldn't exist as it does now. And um, so all these organizations that came up in the wake after that, uh, very few of them had a class analysis. You've noticed that they distinctly identify so-called Moorish and, and identity politics. They don't talk about class. They don't talk about gender. They don't talk about anything but identity. And that this is supposed to be the motivation for violence against law enforcement. Whereas we know that the, the, the whole ideology of the BLA, the whole ideology of the, of the FALM was based on uh, understanding of the relationship between class, nationality, and imperialism and capitalism. And, and that the armed agents of the state were defined as that. Armed well, agents I did, you know, Daruba, I did want to raise that point very quickly that, that, and you sort of went there already, but that on the one hand, I do just want to, just, just want to put out there that, that there are those, myself included, who, who want to defend the wing of African-centered thinkers who approach even the concept of Hotep in a more uh, uh, appropriate and revolutionary way. Uh, who are who are often supplanted or replaced, and uh, uh, certainly in popularity, by these more prominently known uh, names and faces who don't have, uh, I think, an, a, a, you know, a certain appreciation or understanding of the politics or the relationship of uh, cultural awareness and African-centered history to radical revolutionary movement making. So I, I want to just put out, you know, defend that that there is. Well, well, you know, I would but, but then also, but but I, but just real quick, that, but I don't want to get too far into that because because I but I but I did also want to ask you to 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 sort of respond also because you you and sort of already have that what is missing in this document. So as as I'm acknowledging there, that there are radical wings of this sort of African centered world that is often you know replaced by this popular nonsense. There is an attempt by the state to promote unscientific as you put, messianic uh, uh, thinking above revolutionary ideas, and then th to disassociate, even by omission, the, the very fact that many of the people, African people in particular, who picked up an African-centered version or approach to a, a study of dialectics or Marx or communism or socialism, uh, 
uh, have engaged in armed self self-defense and armed struggle uh, 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 in, su successfully and not in, in the history of, of, of uh, in pursuit of African liberation. So there, is this, there seems to be this state-driven attempt to disassociate armed struggle from scientific study and analysis uh, and the role that, that, the relationship that has played and the role that that has played yes, in African liberation yes. and other but liberation was, around the world. That, so anyway, that, yeah. That, that trend began in the 60s too. Um, that trend began in the 60s, the distinction between cultural nationalists who, uh, who decried any class analysis of, 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 of our condition here in the United States is an appropriation of a white ideology mm -hmm. uh, of following the white man, uh, 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 Marx or Lenin. Um, and, and what we do understand though, is that every liberation movement on the African continent that did engage in armed struggle also did so from that understanding of what imperialism was, what, 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 how class and caste played the role in imperialism. And I think it's, um, it's appropriate to quote someone like Amilcar Cabral who said that, that, um, that imperialism, that European uh, colonialism was an interruption of the, his the African historical experience. And that the reclaiming of that African historical experience was what revolutionary liberation was about, the continuation of our own history. And, and we see that that, that has happened in, in, in terms of the messianic messages that, that have supplanted any type of class analysis. And you got to understand with the, with the destruction of uh, any type of radical tradition or thinking that, that understood class and caste, race and gender as, as, as part and parcel of, 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 a, um, uh, of, of a paradigm of power, they were all, this, this, these are the radical traditions that were violently and viciously suppressed. And, 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 and in their place has arose these messianic movements. In their place have arose these encapsulated movements. Um, we, have, we do know that um, the ethnic politics on the African continent is used in the same way. That, 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 that different tribal allegiances, regional allegiances are used to, co to, to undermine a, a, a solidarity against the ruling elite, the political elite of a particular nation that's in collaboration with colonialism and neocolonialism. If we look at Africa today, Africa's problem is not just uh, um, 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 the, the, the paradigm of, 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 of underdevelopment or corruption. It's a, it's a, it's a paradigm in which, in which uh, there are elites in Africa, there are controllers and, and, and heads of state who are in league with, with, the, with, with globalization, who derive wealth, power, and influence um, uh, from this. And their corruption is directly tied to finance capitalism. They steal billions of dollars and put them in banks and in real estate in Europe. And their children are educated in Europe and they come back and they perpetuate this thing. This is what I, or, you know, I, I fell out with my friends in Africa, in government, in Ghana, in, in different places, because I, I, I talked about these things. I talked about how there's 53 nations in Africa and all of them are bogus nation states. They have all been created and manufactured by the former colonial masters. And they all have been placed into an economic paradigm that ensures their subjugation. And just recently, an article came out verifying that when it, when it came to the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, that his assassination was based on the fact that he was talking about creating a new economic and geopolitical paradigm in which African resources and monetary values were based on the Afri Africans' control of gold inside of Africa and the control of their minerals on a common market. And, um, and, and, but we were told that Gaddafi was basically uh, assassinated and killed because of mundane imperial, imperial um, uh, interests. Basically, you know, that he was contrary to, uh, to various types of policies. The Saudis played a significant role. In oh, no, no, no. More specifically, we were told that, 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 that Gaddafi had to be gotten rid of because uh, he was violently repressing uh, his own population. That well, was that, well, that, that was uh, <laughs> yes. That was uh, that was that was the basis, or that has been the basis, and it still is of U.S. foreign policy. is called uh, humanitarian intervention. Right. And and this was a this was a policy that was devised by a black woman, by uh, by by Rice. Um, um, what's her Condoleezza. name? Condoleezza. No, not Condoleezza. The oh, other Susan. One. Susan Rice. Right. Right. And and led 
and led by Barack Obama. Uh, um, and, and, and so what, what I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that, um, is that the suppression of radical radicalism uh, and black radical traditions in America has to do and is rooted in the fear of black people arming themselves for self-defense. This has always been a, 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 a terrifying boogeyman for uh, for white supremacy in the United States ever since the first bullwhip, ever since the bullwhip days. The fear of the African slave, the fear of the African captive was that he would rise up in rebellion and behead his, and behead his owner and kill him in their beds. And this is the fear that runs through everything that's going on right now. That's where the BIE fear comes from. That's where COINTELPRO came from. The Black Panther Party was not singled out because we were cultural nationalists, because we believed in the superiority of black people and that once we were great kings of finding of civilizations, it came because we picked up the gun to defend the black community against white supremacy and against law enforcement, which is right and, and, and riven with, with, with white supremacists. Um, there's no question about that. I mean, the police have even issued, the FBI has issued reports over the past decade indicating how white supremacists intentionally have joined the military and the U.S. And, 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 and the police forces in order to get the type of training and authority they can use to suppress black people. So the idea and the fear of, of the radical tradition is that we will arm ourselves to defend ourselves. That's the fundamental contradiction here. And, and, and as long as we could wipe out that analysis, as long as we could wipe out that, as long as they could ameliorate that fear, as long as they could obfuscate that fear, you know, um, it's good because we have black folks that will join in and say, well, you know, you can't beat them being violent. You have to, you know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't use violence against them, but the state is organized violence. It's not a disorganized uh, uh, um, uh, expression of power. It's so let me just ask you, state. let me just ask you in, in just a couple minutes we have left here, what, just to quickly summarize then, as I think you already have begun to, what does it mean then that this report would come out, that this FBI assessment about black identity extremists uh, what, what does it mean? Or what, and what does it mean when people say that this is a COINTELPRO 2.0? Uh, how should people really interpret this report, well, particularly those who are engaged in any kind of activist uh, uh, struggle? The key, the key word, I believe, at the end of the report, it talks, it, it mentions in passing, taking over institutions that have authority. It talks about, um, it, it, let, let me see if I could pull it up here. I think it's in the last sentence of the summary where it talks about um, a black people organizing in their own communities to control law enforcement, to, 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 to become their own first responders. I mean, imagine the difference in the paradigm of violence if, if black people actually, actually control the police department in their city, in their community. They would then have the authority to indict, to investigate, to arrest, uh, uh, people who violate the law, and in the perception of black folks, if 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 white supremacists in the court system or whatever uh, acted inappropriately, we would have the mechanisms, both legal and extra legal, to defend ourselves. When we have a natural catastrophe, who's the first responders to a natural catastrophe? Okay, how is it that we don't control law enforcement and we're not our own first responders? That the first responders come from outside our community. And although they're comprised of individuals who have the expertise that live inside of our community. So, so we need to understand that the fear here is that if you separate this nexus between violence or armed resistance and, 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 and the state, if you, could, if you could somehow divide it and make one seem criminal and the other one seem legal, then it's, it's okay. But if black folks then decide, well, look, seeing that we can't win this, why don't we just take over the police department? Why don't we just start training our own, our own first responders? And therefore in our community, you know, white supremacists can't come in our community and murder us. The police then will live in our community and therefore they'd be accountable to our community. This is what the fear is. The fear is not that the Hoteppers or that black identity groups are gonna pick up weapons and challenge the police and kill law enforcement. The fear is that we will become law enforcement in our communities that we have, a, we have the ability to do that if we identify with ourselves as a people. So there comes the black identity 
uh, 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 politics. It took to be black and revolutionary now to, in today's uh, um, uh, paradigm of power is to be an abolitionist, is to, uh, is to not reform white supremacy, but abolish it. And the only way we can do that within the parameters of what's available to us now is to become our own first responders, is to control those institutions that are carrying out violence against us in our communities, to control this on a local level, on a state level, and hopefully on a national level. And this is what they fear. They don't fear um, a, a black, black um, um, militants running out into the streets screaming black power and gunning down police. That's not what they fear. What they fear is that we will become our own policemen, that we will actually control the, the uh, for want for, to, to use a more practical um, a director, and we will control the guns in our community. And that is what's afraid. The fear. This is why the whole specter of gun control comes up when a white man guns down all these folks. Then there's the argument about gun control. But we know that violence in our community, uh, a gun violence in our community, is not carried out by individuals and youth who have access to, to, to licensed guns. They are carried, all of the guns that's used in our community are illegal. Stop and frisk. Uh, uh, does one thing and one thing only. It creates a criminal record so that we cannot legally carry guns to defend ourselves. And, and as long as we can't do that, then law enforcement becomes our only fallback. The fallback then, therefore, is the law enforcement that's controlled by the right, that's controlled by white supremacist states, that's controlled by, 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 by the corporate elite in this country, whose major function and purpose is to protect property and wealth. So the fear here, as, as, as they pointed out, is that we will become our own policemen, that we will become our own uh, um, uh, defense force, so to speak, by law, which means that, that they, could, they can't conduct investigations in our community because the investigative agencies are the police. They won't be able to, 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 to bring bogus indictments against us because the prosecutors will then be elected to office and controlled by the community. And, and have the community's interest in heart. So the fear here is not against the, the identity politics, it's the fear that we will transform that identity politics into the legal control of those mechanisms of repression and suppression that are currently um, uh, uh, occupy our community. All right, well, Daruba bin Wahad, we always appreciate you taking the time and thanks again for joining us here at I Mix What I Like. Uh, and we know you are willing to fight for it. So it goes without saying it, as Fred Hampton says to you and to all those else watching, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind. Okay, brother. If you look for me in the whirlwind, it'd be too late, bro. <laughs> <That's, yeah. laughs> peace out. I mix what I, I, mix, I like, what I, I like, what I like, what I like.